Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. This time we're straight from the heart of a bar called Vesuvio's in North Beach. You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com. You can also find us at bff.fm every Monday morning from 5.30 to 6. I'm Aaron. That's Ange. What up? That's Char. Hello. Keeping us in line because it took us three times to do this intro. <laughs> we just made a start over. I think, I think by the 400th episode, we may have our intro down. We may have it all down by then. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope that happens. Uh, yeah, we're at Vesuvio's. It is a historic bar in North Beach, much like uh, Specs, but I think it's been here longer than Specs. I like how we're just doing bitch talk pub crawls because who the, needs a studio? Because why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think also since we've all been so busy, we're meeting later these days. And when we meet in the studio, I kind of just fall asleep in there. And but at just least- basically drinking a beer falling asleep because the air is <laughs> not working we can't have the fan on well and at least if you're in a bar you're, you're surrounded by energy well, so it wakes you up yes. a little bit the, the scene at the studio is usually well, Ange walks in and yeah. then she goes can i have the keys to the refrigerator so that i can <laughs> get myself a drink you're right. running low actually we need to throw some of those we'll utah beers in there, in there. Yeah, yeah. oh yes yes and, and U- uinta proud sponsor of yes proud sponsor and um, but then we end up drinking in the studio, so we might as well just move it to some of our favorite spots I, in San Francisco. Exactly, and it's not that far from the studio. And when you're in town, you're close to the studio. So. Right. Uh, yeah, but we're at Vesuvio's. Here comes more pizza from our pizza boy. Oh, uh, welcome. Can we just say <laughs> thank you? Thank you, for Jeff. For the pizza. Thank our you hero. for being on location, Char. Uh, and also, uh, I'm an engaged bitch now, so... Holy shit, I forgot! Yep. Oh! Oh! This is, a this is the placeholder ring. It's my dad's wedding ring. Oh! Yeah, I'm gonna have it be my wedding ring. Yeah, Don't duh. cry. Um... But yeah, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an old engaged bitch. It I actually forgot, happens. I'm so sorry, I forgot. It's okay, I love you. Oh. Well... And I'm going to officiate, right? We're unsure of that because I feel like I'm going to laugh the entire... I don't <laughs> what know. What the fuck? No, 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 no. no. It's, already, it's already been a discussion. We're just not... We don't know. It's okay. I don't have to. It's not, a, it's not about you. You don't have a What mic. does that have to do okay. with it? You do. <laughs> no one asked about that. Hey, well, wait no one asked you, Jeff. It's just your wedding. And if you I already started writing it. And if you officiate, are you going to wear your Captain Party hat? If you'd like me to, I'll wear whatever you want. Like Joe and Friends. Does he wear a captain's hat? No, he was in like a Navy or Army. He was in a costume. He was filming an Army. And he couldn't get there on time. I kind of remember that. So he was in a Navy, Naval uniform. Okay, here's the thing. I don't want to pressure you. If you don't want me to officiate, it will not hurt my feelings. But if you do want me to, I will put my heart and soul into it. But here's the thing. I'm also very picky, so... Uh, you may say no. No, I would definitely say yes. You guys are... You guys fit my requirements. What I know are, are both you? of you. Yes. I won't just marry anybody. I have I know standards. That. I know. I know you have standards. Contrary to popular belief. So, I know both of you. I feel personally, separately, and I know both of you together, and I was basically there when you met and, like, watched the whole progress. Yes. So that's why I would accept. And right now I have a 1-0 record, and I need to keep that record. Right. And I also have faith in your um, longevity. Oh, thank you. Aww. Longevity. Okay. I mean, you have the receipt on your picket. Okay. <laughs> The That's pe- the equivalent of toilet paper on a shoe, by the way. <laughs> I have a the question. receipt stuck to your beer. Yeah. When somebody, if somebody were to ask you if you would marry them, but you think that they would hinder your record, would you say no? Yes. But I wouldn't say it's because I don't think you have longevity. I would say. You should. Then they'll get in a fight or a, at least a conversation about it. And then maybe you're like intercepting what could have been a terrible relationship. You're no, one correcting. million percent will never just say yes to anybody. No yeah. way. I have to know both of them. I don't, you know. 
I'm not in this for the hustle. So, so the, uh, but I actually have my uh, card on me. If you want to just do it right now, let's get it over with. Hey, Jeff. Did you hear that? We can get married right now. He's not. Look at his eyeballs. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, too, it's still early, by the way. But we don't have an official instead ring. Of, okay, and I already had, I've been thinking about it, and I was like, instead of saying I do, I think you guys should say I do <laughs> do Or do-do. I do-do. Either one. <laughs> See, what do this, I call you this guys? Is, this may be the reason why you don't do it. No, why do I, it'll be. What do I call you? The fartsy twins or something like that? The no, gas, gas. No, none of that. Well, what's my nickname for you guys? I don't know. Never heard it. I have a I have a nickname for you. I've I don't think you. so. Okay. Maybe you just haven't said it to our face. Guess. Oh. No. Anyway. So I think my reservations about, and we brought this up to friends of ours who had their friend marry them, Lindsay and Stephen. Uh, our reservation was we don't want you to feel stressed out. We want you to have a good time. Uh, and that, those would be the reasons why we wouldn't ask you. Like, we'd want it's you to... It's totally win. fine either way. Yeah, but you're going to be but, freaking out all the way before, uh, until... But, you know, I, know how I you also... Are. What I'm worried about is that I would start crying. That's what I can't wait for. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would get all be all fucked up. Oh, no. Thank don't you. worry about it. But anyway... Uh, so we'll see. Yeah. Either way, I'm so excited. Yeah. And I'm so happy. I mean, you guys are practically married anyway, so. Yeah, I mean, it was just like, it was it was a very sweet moment, but I didn't think it was actually happening. Like, I kind of blacked out, and I just thought we were just talking about, because we have often talked about when we get married or, like, when we go places. I'm like, this would be a cool place to get married or, like, have a party or whatever. And then he brought it up in a way. We were, at a, we were in a... Very nice private pool at Cavallo Point. If anyone like to Google that place, it's very special and it's very beautiful. It's right underneath the um, Sausalito side of the Golden Gate Bridge, un- like basically underneath the bridge. And one of my favorite bars is right there called uh, Presidio Yacht Club. Um, it has the best view of the Golden Gate Bridge. So anyways, Jeff was going to do it the night before on a Sunday night. Um, And believe me, we are not that bougie. We cannot really afford this place, but our friend was able to get us a friends and family rate, so I'm just putting that out there. We we cannot normally uh, go somewhere like this. So we went on a Sunday. He was going to propose that night, but I am old, and I drank too much wine, and I passed out in my robe at 9.30. Um, (laughs) So that didn't happen. That's so appropriate. It was appropriate. Uh, Because we came back to the room and he popped open wine and I was like, oh my God, I don't think I can drink any more wine. Like, it's not, it's not going to be cute. And then I passed out. So then uh, we woke up on, (laughs) we woke up Monday morning. (laughs) I also yelled at him in the middle of the night because I was still a little drunk. So nice. It's the, it's our, uh, it's our future. So the next morning I really wanted to go to the spa and we went there and it was like nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, and we got the pool to ourselves. It's heated to a nice 99 degrees. Oh. It's outside under trees. And um, he got in the pool, and I didn't know what was happening. And so he was just like, you know, we've been talking about getting married, and we should really think about that seriously. I'm like, okay, cool. And so we talked a little more, and he's like, well, I have a ring. I, I got a ring. He looked at me, I'm like... Okay. He's like, I have it with me right now. We were in a pool, so it didn't make sense. And I'm like... You're like, cholera? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, I guess cholera. Yeah, I don't know. So he pulls out my... It's my ring. It's a plastic heart ring that I've had forever. So he went through my jewelry to find a ring to put on my finger. And he put it on, and he's like, let's get married. Let's do this. And I'm like, okay. And he put it on, and we got out of the pool, and I just was sitting there, and I was looking at him like, so this is, like, this is happening? This is real. This is happening? Is this happening? <laughs> I just kept looking, and I'm like, this is for real, right? And it's real. So here we are. It's very nice. Word. Well done. Yeah. And no, and there is no, there's nobody there. It was perfect. No public. 
yeah, it's weird. I don't know. You've known me for a minute. I and you're when I called you, you were like, "Oh, okay." Oh. So this is another story. So I am, and and also I'm I didn't so want to text it to excited. You. No, I'm so excited, and I'm so. I mean, it just makes sense. And you are basically married anyway. But when you called me, I was working, and I had like people at my office, and like was really in the middle of something but she calls me and I'm like oh shit this might be important because you don't always call me no I do not so um, only if I see you working in the morning on the street don't think I'm talking about anything else besides her campaigning um, yeah so I picked up and and you were just like well just wanted to let you know <laughs> I'm engaged and it, we, you didn't have a tone that was leading up to something exciting well, so because I was like I didn't oh shit make what it. happened I just want to let you know like I was like what someone what someone died no well or I don't know but it, it didn't sound like it was leading up to something positive and then you told me that and I was like well great yes you know and I but because but, I couldn't just be like what the but I also, which is what I wanted to do. I was very do. aware that you were at work, and I was like, she could be at a, some campaign event. Yeah. She could be no, in, the I was in the of middle of a like, speech. I, I don't would. know what the hell you do. <laughs> you could be you could be on stage uh, acting as a proxy for your, uh, you know, I don't know what the yeah, hell you do. Yeah, all those things I do every day, every day. Yeah, so that's why I kept it at a at a minimal like. So that was you probably know. like the most least eventful telling because you were already like, I'm just letting you know I'm engaged, and I was like, Well, I'm that's very I, great. And then I I'm thought she very was super happy. bummed, and I'm like, Uh oh, we're gonna have to have a whole conversation about it because <laughs> I'm not trying to ruin your life. I'm just letting you know that. No, and I was like, I'm really excited. Just that's letting you know so the good awesome. times are over. <laughs> <laughs> At least, here's the thing. We had our last hurrah in New Orleans. In April of 16. Word. But that's where I want my bachelorette Ooh, to I be. Just got, I, I just got excited because I was like, oh, that means we're going to travel somewhere. Yes, we are. <laughs> How did you know? So, French Quarter Fest like, or what, next year? I don't know. I don't know. I know. Well, what's funny is, like, I'm thinking about, like, well, being together for forever. And so I was just like, oh, good for them. And then now that you're talking about it, then all of a sudden you said, oh, bachelorette party. And then that's when I was like, ooh. Okay. And you're like, oh, good for us. There's something. There's something happening here. Duh, <laughs> duh. I, yeah, Shar, clear your calendar for the bachelorette and the wedding. Just FYI, you're one of the ones in the inner circle that'll be invited. <laughs> I, was I don't say, what are you thinking? How many people? S- small. Good luck with that. You know half the city. I do. That's true. But like small ceremony and whatever. But I think then we'll have like a big party for like everyone else. So, At I the same know. time? No. Okay. I don't know. I really don't. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I This is not... And the reason why I'm, I'm a little subdued about it is because I haven't lived my whole life as a woman waiting for the moment that I get proposed to and then plan a wedding. And you're like, ready for everything you ever dreamed of? Yeah, Me neither. I don't know. You're not like those girls in the no, movies? You know that. And I, you know, I have a podcast called Bitch Talk. We talk about farts and shitting and uh, movies. I mean, that actually should be our hashtag. Um, your wedding vows are going to be I do do. <laughs> Absolutely. I've been I, thinking about. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just, I don't really know if anyone out there has gotten married <laughs> and knows like the do's and don'ts and has some hot tips. You can email us at the real BT pod at gmail.com. You can tweet at us. Uh, bitch talk pod. You can, what yeah, you, that would be the best two things to do. What if you got married at the lost church? That's kind of funny. I thought of that for a minute. I was telling her to get married in Reno, so. Yeah, Reno, but it's called the Lost Church. That's why I like it. Yeah. I don't know. I really. It should be outdoors. Well, there's a spot in spe- specifically that we're thinking of that has outdoor and indoor. I don't know. But I just want good food and good drinks and good music. Dancing. Yeah. So those are like my main things. But then today I was like, oh, my God, there's those things called, like, bridal showers that I don't give a fuck about. Oh, uh, that's bullshit. Okay. There's the bachelorette gonna, party. Well, there's got to be somebody. You've got to know somebody that's going to be willing to throw right. one of those for and you. I and you, I don't think you know anybody that wants to throw something like that. Yeah, I feel like no one will want. Maybe Megan. But I also oh, yeah. don't want to put that on people. I don't know. This isn't no, my strong party. And then you focus Andrew on. And I will plan the, the, the getaway. 
I, yeah, all of my friends will plan the getaway. I'm not worried about that. Lindsay's already like, what are we doing? And Courtney's already in, like... Yes. Dude. It is on. I'm going to lose like four years off of my life that yeah, weekend. Yeah, I'm like, save up those uh, <laughs> points for your liver because we're not getting any younger. I don't need anyone arrested. And that's the problem. Ask Jeff on Monday night. I was like, the problem is all my friends can party, and that's a problem. Like, I, there's like not one person besides me in the group that would be like, hey, you You're guys. the one that's going to bed early. Yeah, yeah that was just about to say. I don't. I'm worried about that. She's the one that's going to fall asleep at 9.30. Yeah, I'm fine with that. So that her fiancé can't propose. When starts at 10 a.m.? No, I'm talking about the bachelorette party. That's the problem. I'm worried about this. <sighs> Very worried, but also excited. So I don't know. I'm so happy for you. Old bitch. Good Get job, married. buddy. Thanks. Not too shabby. Uh, so anyways, that's happening. Uh, you know what else happened? Uh, Robert Mueller... This is Mueller. Why are you Mueller. calling her Mueller? I don't know. Her. There was a seven-hour testimony around his report that he released in April today. Uh, I didn't get to watch it. I didn't have the luxury of sitting around watching it. I uh, listened to part of it while I was driving my ass around, running from event to event, but I didn't really get a good gist of it because it's just like 15-minute increments during a fucking seven-hour... <laughs> Char was parlaying with that pizza. The pizza boy over there can't h- help himself. That looks good. Now I want to bite mine. Bite it. Uh, yeah, it was... Uh, the only thing I heard from the pizza boy this morning uh, was that it was basically the Democrats wanting to know about the report and kind of being support... Not supportive, but whatever about the report, but the Republicans accusing him of basically uh, this was a witch hunt about tr- Trump dump uh, and that they were ridiculing him for the report. So it was just like, you can't win. Robert Mueller. I mean, duh. That should be the, that should be the title of his re- next book, Robert Mueller Can't Win. Do you expect them to have any kind of integrity? or No. Um, but a few things about his testimony is that he warned that Russia was already trying to sabotage the 2020 presidential elections and that we need to uh, watch that. And what else? Sorry, going through my notes here. He had to publicly reject uh, Dump's criticism that Mueller, uh, that this was a witch hunt by Mueller. And he also... Uh, said in his testimony that Dump could be charged with obstruction of justice after he leaves office. And then everyone's freaking out because they're like, this is when he's going to pull rank and do be Dump. Be like, I'm not leaving the White House no matter what because he doesn't want to be arrested. Well, this is the scary part. He can absolutely wage war easily with Iran, among other countries. And that could be his game plan because sitting presidents during a time of war tend to get reelected. So. Yeah. That's another thing. We're also in a huge deficit, so why not just go to war also to spend more money? Mm. Like a trillion dollar deficit. Um, there are some things after I read through the report on a couple of different outlets. I don't really know much about Robert Mueller, um, and I don't know if anyone else does, but did you know his middle name is Swan? <laughs> no, but I'm really happy that I do. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Robert. See, you keep shocking me with your, your tone. I never know what to expect. <laughs> I was ready to hear some like doomsday shit, and, like no. middle, like Miss Swan. Remember <laughs> from Math TV, oh Miss Swan. <laughs> I no. love that shit. You so, don't remember? No. The Asian little Asian. I woman. remember her. Who's oh. on the ma- marvelous, <laughs> marvelous Mrs. Maisel? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. I just don't connect Robert Mueller with Miss Swan. Right, and he's the third. So there's two more. There's two more. Out Robert there. Swan, Swan, Swan Muller. Muller. That's like a, a ballet. Yes. Swan, Swan Lake. River. Swan Lake. Ah. <laughs> wow. Uh, did you know that he is a registered Republican and has been since I don't remember when, forever? And uh, he's a Vietnam I vet. I did know that one. He's a Vietnam vet. And I he, knew that one. Uh, got the Bronze Star and a Purple Heart while serving his country. Well, that's why I knew that he so was a I Republican because when asshole is like, this is a witch hunt, like, 
a Democratic, you know, the Dems. Yeah, it's like, not, no, it's, he's registered Republican. This is not about that. It's about something way it's bigger actually, than it's that. It's not even about him. It's about him obstruction, uh, obstructing justice. That's what it's about. The person obstructing justice. Anyways, yeah, I don't know. And then, you know... Uh, uh, but is this going to change anything? No, Pelosi is still kind of like, well, we're being measured and da-da-da-da-da. So I don't know what's going to happen. Who knows? Uh, yeah. So before we start recording, we started talking about Luke Perry. Uh, but so uh, I brought up Luke Perry because his last basically role before he passed away was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is the next Tarantino movie. I had no idea that Luke Perry was even in it until recently because now he's in the trailer because, of course, he is to sell the movie. Um, I really want to see this movie, though. Well, that's the problem. I love Tarantino movies, but I don't love Tarantino. He's a piece of shit. So um, you can't tell me that he was Harvey Weinstein's best friend and nothing ever happened. But or he didn't know anything. Yeah. Or that he just wasn't a part of those Harvey Weinstein parties or whatever. Like, yeah. Harvey Weinstein basically made Tarantino's uh, film career. Uh, the Weinstein Company did. So, and he's just kind of terrible to women. Everyone knows that, and everyone knows that, but they still want to work with him. So, well, um, even just seeing if you watch one interview with him, he's just fucking creepy energy. I also just think he's always on coke. So. I don't understand. Like yeah, he's done how a mound of coke before a, a every woman interview. can date him. <laughs> I don't think anyone his, dates his him. energy is I don't think that's a thing. Speaking of uh, dating and celebrities that we have crushes on or had crushes on, uh, a mutual friend of ours gave us some interesting news that a beloved Out of nowhere by the way. Uh, like, yeah, out of out nowhere, of, random Monday we, morning text yes. just to serve your week start your week off uh, on a bang. weird note. Yeah. yeah. She told us that a, a celebrity that we both are fond of yes. via work or and looks and whatever. Yes, sure. <laughs> sure. Is is actually gay and allegedly, allegedly, allegedly gay, gay and uh, people that work with him or his circle, they have to sign non-disclosures um, and and, is, yes. and it was really, well, so, one, it, I mean, one, who cares? Yes. And two, it was really sad because this is an established actor. Yes. So talented. Yep. Beautiful, smart. Like, what's the fucking deal? Why can't you be yourself? In this day and age, do you know what a hero you would be to so, so many, many people? And He would basically be on with the cast of Queer Eye for, or just Queer Eye. He, they would just add him on. Like next season, said it now. <laughs> he'd be on for I. Uh, if it's true, I don't know. But I also replied back to to our friend. I don't know if you saw that. That oh, that's that's why we get along so well. Yeah, that's, that's on par true. with your track record yeah, of crushes. Yeah, it's on celebrity par crushes. Track. Yeah, it's on par with the track record. Um, yeah, I just I I replied also to her like I'm sad about it because in this day and age you would just think that you could just be you, but it would have. That would have changed his career, and will if it ever happens. But if you've already established yourself As and one clearly way. you're talented, I think ultimately what the lesson is for me is that you can't look at these people and, and think that their lives are perfect nope. and they, they have it made and they're talented and good looking and this and that. Like we all have our fucking demons, and or, or we just we are uh, we're human. Yeah. And and unfortunately how can you how can you look at this famous celebrity and just even imagine that you would even doubt yourself for a second or have these insecurities? Well, you, you just, know it just perspective. Just, when you especially when he started, there was just no way that that if it's true, I still don't know if it's true enough, but... Could be, I'm not when, saying no. When he started, that wasn't really a time to be you. Yeah, but now, you are. it's like, who cares? Everybody's everybody's gay. Everybody's a little gay. Everybody's, everybody's a little, a little gay, but you know? I also, but you're, it's still stereotypical in Hollywood. Like, there are the stereotypical, uh, you know, men, uh, women, 
gay men, gay women, and then there's still not that much room for people to be queer, uh, to be bisexual. Um, well, maybe he should to get together trans. with uh, Scarlett Johansson, and then they can play Trees or whatever she wants play to do. Play Trees? Did you hear her comment? She was like, "No," because she got that backlash for getting the role. Well, of first an Asian she played woman. the Asian woman, and then and then she got uh, hired on to play a trans. Oh yes, yes, uh, woman. Yes, and then uh, because of all the backlash, she's like, "Okay, I'm not going to take this role." But she was like. You know, I understand why people are upset, but I'm an actor, and I should be able to play anything, a trans, a this, a that, a tree. Like She, she named a tree. Just shut up. It's just one of those things where it's like, you don't need to talk anymore. Well, and she was real beloved before she started talking yeah, I all I beloved this. her. Yeah, likewise, same. Boobs. She's, she's hot, whatevs. It's a fact. But I'm I, sorry, but you don't mention... A trans person and a tree, like they're the same thing. There's not this line of trees trying to be accepted in a world that, right. you know, like. Right. No, I hear you. <laughs> uh, so. That's an interesting side note. <laughs> I'll have to write it down in our notes. So I remember what we actually talked about. Trees. Um, yeah, so that was a weird and interesting tidbit. Thank you, friend of the show. Uh, but now I'm going to be going down a Google rabbit hole, I'm sure, about that at some point. But the point of the story is you don't know people's struggles. Right. And it's sad. It's and sad that we can't feel accepted, even though in the general spectrum you're beloved by so many people, yet you think you can't say this thing that's be your true self. And you're those... Uh, Hollywood A-listers, their life is so highly curated. Don't believe anything, anything yeah. you read. It is, there are publicists and managers and studios still running that shit. So mm -hmm. that's all you need to know. Mm -hmm. They're they're telling the story. The actors are not able to tell their stories and be them. End of story. Luke Perry. <laughs> back to Luke Perry. Yeah, back to happier so, things. Is that yeah, where well, all this actually, started? Luke that's Perry, not really happy. Having passed away is not a happy thing. No, but but Shar and I, I don't know if you're on par with this. Lim I'm not on par with it. So I'll step you out You were not a 90210 yes, whatever. I liked it. I watched it, but you guys are still a little obsessed with it. I am not. Shar's algorithms are all about 90210 now, so I don't really know <laughs> what's happening. My algorithms are not about 90210. They're all over the place. Now but it's you, probably going to be all about engagement fucking rings because I did one Google search, and now it's about it. So oh I don't know. God. So, but wait a second. <clears throat> Did, you've not, you didn't know that they're rebooting? I probably knew when he died because then it came up, and I think that when, when we talked about it, you talked about it. That's right. Okay. Because your algorithm was already set to 902. Well, because <laughs> <clears throat> well, they made the announcement that they were going to do the reboot. And two days later is when he passed away. Yes. Yes. So yes. then they were, because the story was that the reason he didn't sign on, because it was, it's basically the original cast. All of them. It, Which all. is kind of nuts. And they actually all look great. It's yeah. insane. Well, that's and why Steve actually, actually is attractive for the first it. time. I don't so want to hear go. about Steve. He has implants. Let's be real. Well, whatever. I'm just saying. Head to toe implants. I never understood <laughs> Steve, but he's uh, looking whatever he it is. Sharknado. That's what you need to understand. All I know and is Brian Austin, yeah. Yeah, Brian Austin Green. Yeah, Brian Austin Green. Originally, it was just the it was six of the eight because Luke Perry couldn't do it because of Riverdale, and Shannon Do Doherty couldn't do it well, because do she's it a bitch Dale because she's sh Shannon <laughs> and she's doesn't do anything. Bitch. Yeah, and. <laughs> but then Luke Perry passed, and they actually had talked about it. He had said that the only reason he wasn't doing it was because of his schedule with Riverdale, Riverdale and it wouldn't fit. And then he passes away, and then we're like, we're you know, like they're gonna have to do it without him ever even appearing right. on it. And then a couple of months later, uh, they brought uh, Shannon on, and so it's basically the six of the seven. Is it seven or is it eight? Oh, Luke. so. T Tori. Tori. All of them. The well, she uh, needs the money, right? Gabrielle Carteris. Car is she 50 now? So she, she's, she's like she was grandma. She's older than all of them. Yeah. yeah. She's probably a grandmother. She's supposed no, to be like a sophomore in high school, and she's like pro She speak. was 25. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but yeah, it's... it. They... And they uh, apparently... They pitched, to, they pitched it to Fox as a team of, like, the six that did it. 
they were just like, this is what we have in mind, and this is what we're going to do, it, and we're all in, sign us up. And then they said, sight unseen, no script yet. They said, okay, we'll do seven episodes. Okay. And so their reboot is actually not a real reboot where they're all going to be, like, it's not like, oh, it's... 90210 25 years later and everybody's playing Donna and David they're, it's, they've got a twist on it that they're not revealing to everybody but basically someone's gay it, I think what they're doing because <laughs> they won't I know who they won't weekly. release that much info but the, but the gist of it is I think it's like a show that is they play themselves but they play like obnoxious characters of themselves that are getting together to do a 90210 reboot so, oh, it's so it's like a full, yes. full reality. So it's like a documentary now. Maybe. See, that's the thing is they're not telling anybody. They basically just said, this I is think, all we're giving up. Honestly, I think that's better than them being like, I now know. we're all reunited and living in Beverly Hills again. You know, and I think boring. that's And well, bullshit. that was because... As I had a feeling it's probably going to suck, but I'm going to watch every episode and be very happy yeah, about it anyway. Yeah, and you guys can have your... Maybe that's the moment now. The I still have... 90210 moment. Dude, half oh, of I can my talk DVR about every single one of them. 90210 episodes from the first few seasons. Oh, yeah. I'm not even mad about it. I've seen every episode ten times over. I started watching it when I was it in the sixth me. grade. Oh, sorry. Side note, I just thought about this. If NKOTB uh, reboots their cruise, that's what I want my bachelorette party to be. <laughs> oh, if it reboots. Gotcha. I was like, because we're not doing it this year. I get it. I'm down. Sorry, anyways. So I was like, maybe I should have a 90s-themed bachelorette party. But then I was like, then my brain went to Nuka's on the block. Then I'm like, the fucking cruise. That would be the best. Anyways, sorry. We should, well, we should, what Not if they're Bobby. on tour? We should go to... Or we can do like a... I know. What we should do is we should... If they tour next year... Yes. When they pass through New Orleans, that's when we go to New Orleans. Done. <laughs> Pizza Boy down there has had a lot of beers tonight. <laughs> or we can go on a cruise, like a three-day Mexican cruise. Everyone's going to lose their lives. You're tripping. Look, well, you have to pay for alcohol, then. Uh, no. You smuggle in alcohol. I got all the tricks. Allegedly. Allegedly. I go Anyways, on a we reboot. Get, then we won't fit in any clothes for the wedding. But you can also, <laughs> if you buy it early enough, you can get the booze unlimited drink package. I'd be down for that, of course. That's Char, sorry. Back to the and they have casinos on the ship. Right. Char was like, well, you guys don't have to get married really soon. And I'm like, well, Jeff's parents are getting older. And then my sister's um, mother, Neva, who's in her 90s, she's like, when's the date? You know, we're going to, we're up, we're in our 90s. Hurry up. We might die. I was like, okay, Jesus. Keeping it real. So we kind of have to do it. And then she's like, how about you do it in May? And then we all go on a cruise together. <laughs> I don't know if that's all gonna happen. That sounds like a honeymoon you want. Yeah, I wanna. I definitely. 90, I def, 90 year old. I definitely want to be with Fox News watchers on my honeymoon. <laughs> but I mean, I'd have a lot to record. It'd be a lot of podcast fodder. That's that's funny. It's funny that you mentioned that because I was my grandma just turned ninety yesterday. Yes. Oh shit! And uh, so my mom, I was talking to my mom, and my mom's like, "I want to take your grandma on a." on a trip to Vegas. And then I'm like, okay, that sounds like fun. And then she said, and we're going to take your Auntie Norma, which is my grandma's sister, who's in her 80s. And I was well, like, okay. Young. Yeah. And then, and then she goes, and your Auntie Zenny too, which is their sister-in-law, who's in her early 80s. And then I'm like sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, and I basically, my, my first reaction to my mom was like, you just invited like three 80 and 90 year olds. Yep. On a road trip to Vegas with me, <laughs> I'm so like, I'm gonna guess who's gonna be driving. Oh, well, that's what I. Well, that was my reaction. I was like, uh, that sounds great, Mom. Um, it'll be like I'm uh, driving around a geriatric ward. <laughs> driving Miss Daisy <laughs> times four. No, I don't know. Yes, it's like lift. Literally, you gotta lift him out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, I concur with Steve Kerr. That's gonna happen. Yeah. See. Yeah. I knew I'd come um, up with a good one eventually. So one you, guys will have to, you guys will have to be the 90210 folks. Um, 
also uh, something that was in the news. I'm just pulling from uh, in the news. We talked about one of our favorite comedy clubs possibly closing later this year. And uh, just the other day, they received uh, legacy status in San Francisco. Bravo. Uh, well so, done. Yeah, well so done, San Francisco. Punchline is not moving. Um, our friend that works there, I ho- he only wanted it to move so it could be uh, refurbished. So I'm hoping that they will actually refurbish, maybe change out the carpet in Punchline. I bet it's been there since Robin Williams started in the 70s, 60s, so 70s. Um, but we're really happy about that. That's one of our favorite clubs. I love that room so much. Um, and I'm just happy. I'm happy it's around. I have a side note because Aaron Peskin was sort of a part of this. And he's your supervisor. I saw him in North Beach a few weeks ago. He was at Trieste. And I told, I was texting Jeff. I'm like, I kind of want to talk to Aaron Peskin, but I'm weird about it. And you're working on a campaign right now. But how open are supervisors... Granted, your supervisors, you're in a campaign season, but how open are they to just like randos coming up to them and talking to them about politics? It happens everywhere, I every know, where you I was go. Like, I just don't want to bombard him getting his coffee. In That's the their fucking job. All right. So I should have just. And if to they're him. not open to that, like you're, you're the voice of your constituents, and if you're not open to listening, but to I'm not even in his district. That's sh- the thing. He too. doesn't know that. Okay. He this does follow, businesses. He does follow Bitch Talk Podcast, so by the way. What? Yeah. Why? How? I don't, know. I don't know. That's weird. FYI. I think I tagged it's probably him. In, I tagged him in punchline stuff, I think. I was going to say it's probably because of being tagged and, and also the tags of like everywhere in North Beach <laughs> right. that we go. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. But in my opinion, uh, if you're the supervisor, you signed up for that job, and you're the voice of you of the people of the city. So okay. All right. you have so to be I can open to that. Any supervisor I see, and talk yeah. to them about the city. All yeah, right. great, good to know. So uh, another thing in comedy news is so we're firming up our details, but uh, if you're in the Bay Area, uh, the weekend of September seventh and eighth, Bitch Talk Podcast presents. A night of comedy at Cobb's Comedy Club. Uh, it's going to be an all-women comedy lineup. We're still waiting to see who's going to be booked. The good people at Live Nation uh, are going after our list, and who knows who else. I'm always open to meeting new comics, especially women comics. Um, but we're excited. We're on the fucking radar of Live Nation now. I mean, we were before with Reimagine, but this was different because they reached out to, to Char. Um, and they were like, "How? What would you think about Bitch Talk Presents a comedy show at Cobb's?" And I'm like, "Are uh, you fucking kidding me? I've been waiting for this moment since this goddamn podcast started." Yeah. Well, That's pretty crazy to be reached out to. Well, when I went, yeah, when I got the email, I'm like, "Let me go check with the girls and see what they say." Right. And I'm like, "Duh." Duh. Replied to you guys. I think I know the answer to this, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're we're really. I'm stoked. I don't even know what we're doing yet. But, I know. Uh, I but but we just our know name. What, our know, name in the marquee. We know where it's at, and we know what day it is. And also, and everything is, else is. Well, someone I told. Falling into place. Yeah, someone I told. They're like, "Oh, are you doing stand up?" I'm like, "No," um, but <laughs> uh, not yet. Not yet. That's coming. But uh, I'm excited. Yeah, we and might be again, recording live from there. By we, the way, a let's just stuff. remember. Not far from Angie's house, yet again, another event. Oh, yeah. Everything's in what? Angie's neighborhood. Why are you mad at me? I'm not mad. It just must be nice. <laughs> it's in a fun neighborhood. I was just telling somebody that I have a show that somebody hiccups when they're drinking. <laughs> Do you have just a folder of hiccups? I should. You should. Those should be <laughs> you, breaks in the you show. You only need it from that one episode with Dino. Oh, oh. and you, no, but you kept getting up and going pee also. Oh, Dino, we miss you. That Anyways. was back when I got real nervous, so I would like... All you were doing was drinking, the, like before, during, and <laughs> then after. Um, now I... But yeah, come come out. Just save the date now. We're going to start promoting the shit out of that. But September 8th, the Cobbs were super stoked. So And it's a weekend, so nobody has any goddamn excuse not to come. It's a Sunday evening. Who you cares? don't have plans. Right. I don't care if it's Monday. Just don't over drink. Don't be. The, and also, I don't want any assholes, first timers in the audience. If you don't know how to behave in a comedy club, that's not my problem, and I will call your fucking ass out. No, Sunday evenings at a comedy club is better. Okay. It's not amateur hour like Fridays or. Right. 
Um, good friend of the show, speaking of comedy, uh, Reggie Steele, was at Comic Con over the weekend with mm. his good friend Mahershala Ali. Who oh, was, that guy. Uh, yeah, we. I mean, who is that? I don't know. We've had two degrees of separation from Mahershala, like five different interviews. Right. Yes. Just the tip tipping. Yes. Uh, Reggie, like three times. Barry Jenkins. Barry Jenkins. And basically, it's because, gonna of, because of Barry, uh, Lulu Wong. Yeah, that's three degrees. Close enough. So Reggie was down at Comic-Con over the weekend, uh, over this past weekend in San Diego, and posting photos with his good friend, Mahershala. I just lo- I love Reggie so much. We need to have him back on the show, but I love him so much that he supports everyone. And uh, Mahershala Ali's been named. I've never seen Blade, but he's the new Blade. Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, yeah, he is in the reboot. Speaking of reboots, in the reboot, so he lands good gigs. I just want him on the show. He I just, he picks well. He picks roles. He picks that his are, friends and his roles well. Hmm. He should pick his podcast well. He should yeah local, the premier podcast of San Francisco. <laughs> he needs a bump. He needs a bump. Clearly. Yeah, he really clearly needs a bump. <laughs> he just, uh, he's just been named. He's just been named the new blade. He, needs, oh. he clearly needs a bump. Also, speaking of Lulu Wong, I heard her on NPR this morning on Fresh Air. Just saying. Hmm. That happens all the goddamn time. Yeah. Come on, Terry Gross, get off our ass. Anyways, <laughs> with that. Speaking of asses. <laughs> thanks for listening to us make asses of ourselves. Exactly. Per the use. Per the use. At one of our favorite uh, local watering holes. <laughs> And stay tuned. Where are we going to end up next? Who knows? But we appreciate you. Don't forget to go to www.bitchtalkpodcast.com. Follow us on all the socials. Listen to us at 5.30 a.m. on Monday mornings at bff.fm. Powered by GoTo Productions. Bitch, please.